I've got a case study that I want to show you today. Um, it's an interesting one because what it does, it talks about uh, prescription medicine and lots of people are on prescription medicine and in some cases that they may actually not need to be and they may be withdrawn from the prescription medicine of which they've been prescribed if they make changes to their lifestyle uh, in particular in the diet. Uh, I've got a chap here uh, named Ian Gerben who she lives in New Zealand which is completely the other side of, of the planet to where I'm based here in the UK. Um, he was born with a, a rare heart condition in the late 70s, underwent open heart surgery um, to correct a birth defect. And it, one of these cases where the condition was repaired but, but not sort of cured as such, and you know, it was a bit of a, a bit of a uncertain outlook, shall we say, as to how well he would do, um, certainly through adolescence and into adulthood and then through a later life and what may happen. Um, Really where Ian got to is the point where his health started to deteriorate as he pushed into his late 20s and he was referred to cardiology through an adult uh, congenital cardiologist uh, because of his condition. Uh, and the intervention was made there and they were prescribed him a drug called frisamide, which is, is a diuretic. And what that drug does is it starts to play around. I should show you a picture here, actually. It starts to play around. This is inside the kidney. It's called a loop of Henle. And this is the ascending limb of the loop of Henle here. What this does, um, essentially, is it starts to play around with the fluids. And it, nature does a very good... It works very well on its own. That's the point I want to make. Uh, it starts to play around with sodium and potassium and chloride. Uh, co it's a co-transporter essentially and these are these are membrane transport proteins which really regulate the amount of fluid that's in your body and part of the reason why you could be prescribed these types of drugs like this is to regulate the, or lower the blood pressure and what that does, the, the me mechanism to do that is by lowering the overall volume of blood within the body uh, and, it, and it does work uh, but it's very very potent and some of the problems that we can have with this are imbalances of, of the electrolytes. If you start to lose too much fluid, what can happen is this this barrier here that we've got this um, between the bloodstreams can start to lose too much sodium and too much potassium that can be leaked from the body in forms of salts, essentially. So what can happen there is people can end up with these imbalances, which can cause some other problems as well, in which case then somebody may need to take another pill um, or you know, to, to compensate or, or something else. And then this restoring the balance, actually, as I've mentioned on here, um, can then cause even more problems. So you can end up in a bit of a spiral. And this drug, it... Whilst being effective, it's a tough one for people who are busy because they have to regulate the amount that they intake in terms of not just the drug, but also in terms of fluids that they're intake. If they're taking too much, they find that they pee all the time. Taking too little, they can feel very, very bloated. And Ian was in the situation where he was struggling. It's somebody who's busy, he's a senior policy analyst, somebody who's extremely intelligent. And... You know, sort of, sort of fleet from fleet from sort of meeting to meeting each day, and he says here he says he'd spend his day stressing about when he could take his diuretic. You know, which meetings he had, did he have to travel? You know, he didn't know if he was going to need the bathroom an hour after taking you know pill or not. How many times he'd need to go, and that's not a sustainable way to live. He's put on here his record was about every ten minutes for for nearly two hours, and that's that's terrible because that's going to leave him extremely dehydrated, and it's awful in terms of physical health, but also mental health as well because of the reliance. And so what happened? Ian got in touch with me, and we had sort of a conversation. It was mostly sort of sort of via email initially. And um, we went through and said, okay, well, you know, let's have a look at this. You know, the, the cardiology side of things is more complex, so it's not really masses that, that I could get involved with there at all. Um, but I looked at a lot of the evidence to show, well, why would somebody be prescribed this? What could they do to reduce the requirements for this drug and, and possibly even get them off, off this drug altogether? It, it, because it was affecting his lifestyle so much, we said that let, let's go ahead and look at the most sensible option for this. Let's find out where people don't suffer from this particular problem. This drug is least prescribed, even though it's available, and let's start to see what they eat. So it's a very, a very logical approach to this. And we went down that route, and we, what we did is we, we implemented a diet um, 
on the back of some coaching and advice on, on, on how to go and actually shop. So rather than saying, here's a diet and here's some actual recipes to go and make, it was a bit, a bit more a bit more complicated now. We thought, well, because he's got five children, he's busy, he's traveling a lot for work as well, it's not going to be easy to say each day you're going to have the same meal. Whereas if you're living from home and commuting each day, perhaps, if you have a very rigid routine, that's easy to say, well, you're going to have oatmeal every day for breakfast. Not so easy if you're traveling. So really within it was about putting together some guidelines and saying, right, let's work on that. And then coaching in how to order food and it's out, ask for foods in different places, hotels, canteens, these sorts of things, or on business lunches. And, and that worked extremely well uh, as, as a diet for him. And it, it adapted also to his home life, which was really, really important because Ian was saying he was getting home and feeling absolutely exhausted, which is no, no way to, to live at all. It shouldn't be like that. Uh, particularly not somebody who's you know, in, the, in the early mid thirties. Um, what Ian was saying here is that just this is eighteen months after we started talking to each other. He says he doesn't need to take the diuretics anymore. Simple. We got him off medication. He says he's free from the stress and the planning and the inconvenience. So that was the stress of not knowing if he'd have to go to the toilet five times that you know the next hour or whatever or whether he'd feel extremely dehydrated or whether he'd get sit in a meeting and be bloated and, and exhausted or whatever it might have been so we, by removing that was fantastic that was a direct result of changing the diet that he was eating and that came about through the education that he received in his words what he's saying is he's saying i'm liberated and i think anybody could offer you know applause for that because that really that's giving some of their quality of life back. And he says it took 18 months because he made small gradual changes and that, that was his choice. And I said, well, whatever works for you. And I said, you know, look, if you're, if you're super busy with work and you're super busy with family and everything else going on, then it's up to you. You, you can do this however you want. And then that one of his things that was important to him was I don't want to put a constraint on this. I don't want to say this is going to happen in 20 days or two months or whatever it's going to be. I just, I just want to do it and see how we get on. I said, okay, well, let's do that. Um, and there is no timeline with these things. For some people, that they want to do up. Some people, there isn't. And people talk about goals and targets and things like that. And that's fine. Well, you know, I can do that. And for some people, that works. But some people have got so many other goals and targets going on in their life that to introduce another one can, can lead for failure. And so that's why we agreed to do it this way. Um, but the point to make from this is, is its constant improvement. His quality of life has got better and better and better as compared to where the stark contrast to where it was before, where it was on the decline, and, and quite rapid decline. Um, his weight also decreased as well uh, by seven kilograms, which is significant. And I think the really nice thing to take from this is, is this, that it is, for the first time in my life, I feel excited about the future, not concerned. And when somebody's concerned about the future, they're living in a state of, of fear, and that is not sustainable. What we've done here with Ian by essentially releasing him from the shackles of his prescription medication that was essentially ruling his life, now made him excited about life. And that's that, that, that's great. For somebody who's got a, a large family, that means he's excited about the future, excited about grandchildren, excited about seeing all his children grow up, uh, and, and about himself as well. And that's so powerful. So that's, that's what I wanted to share with you. As I said and stated, and Ian's put here as well, that there's no timeline with this. It, you can do this as quickly if you want to. With these types of things, we could probably do it in, I would say, probably 10 days. If you want to do it over a longer period of time, then that's okay. Uh, and it really depends on what you want to get out of this. So that, that's a nice, a nice, sensible case study of somebody who I, I may or may not meet in the future. I never know. Um, but somebody on the other side of the world whose life has been absolutely transformed. And the great thing about it as well, in the same way that you're likely watching this, through a computer screen, uh, it's exactly the same mechanism. And, that, and that's how he managed to get in touch as well. So if you've got any questions on this or any of the other case studies, then any any general advice at all, quite frankly, please feel free to get in touch. Because I think the more people that we can help with this, then the better. And as I've said before, everybody wins with this. Um, maybe in the short term, perhaps the pharmaceutical companies may lose out on a certain amount of money. But the reality of it is, is that a lot of these prescription medications, and there's a huge amount of money being spent on them in the Western world, when really 
that resource needs to be diverted to developing world where they really need these medications with respect to vaccination and, and, and sanitation and, and infectious diseases. That's where the real money needs to be spent for pharmaceuticals. If we can do that, then we can start to have a planet which can be really happy and that, that's great. So thanks for watching. It's much appreciated. If you, if you find these things interesting, then subscribe to the channel. I'll chat to you soon. Cheers.